So we always keep an eye on the difference between the free and the total. Uh, like this, 1.52, 1.82, that's about a 0.3 difference. Generally, uh, we'll see about a 0.2 to a 0.4 jump, so uh, 0.3 is uh, totally fine to me, so we're happy with that. Check what time it is. And now we take our sample. Let me turn this on like fresh. Uh, this is the part you always have to be careful about. Uh, this is the part that operators generally mess up on. Uh, sample, if a sample comes back uh, negative, uh, nine times out of ten, it's usually the operator uh, could be breathing into the bottle, could accidentally poke your finger in there, or touch something, and it'll come up uh, compromised. So you always want to make sure that uh, your hands are clean, you got gloves on. Uh, you want to make sure that there's nothing around that can kind of blow into the bottle, and you just want to be uh, super careful with that. And we're just going up to this line here that it has on the bottom. Yep. And once we have our sample, we keep it in the cooler with uh, some ice packs to keep it cold and fresh. And then later on we'll bring that over and uh, do the lab first. So once we got our samples taken, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put them in the quantity tray and in the incubator to cook for 24 hours. So the first thing we do is we transfer all the information that's on here on the quantity tray. Where you uh, took the sample from, Kent Pump House, uh, what time you sampled at, uh, your samples for in total. And then I also put today's date and the time uh, that I'll be taking them out tomorrow just in case I'm not here something happens and somebody else sees that they got put in today and the time uh, they know to take them out. Yeah. Once we got all the information on the tray we're going to take our uh, call alert, the food, and we're going to put it into the bottle here. So again, you want to be careful not to touch anything the inside of the cap. You don't want anything to fly in or anything like that, so be super careful. Mix that up. Just gonna let that sit and kind of settle out, get rid of the bubbles, and then uh, we'll put it into the tray. Just put them upside down to kind of uh, help with the mixing a little bit. Uh, generally, I have uh, seven that I do, so I would be putting the food in, shaking it, and uh, continuing to do the rest of the samples while I'm doing this. Once you're ready with your sample, take your tray, then you're going to pour that into the tray again very carefully, you don't want anything getting in there. Once it 
that's in the tray. Grab this. So now we got our sample, our uh, tray. See all the little cubes are uh, filled up. Uh, you you always want to make sure you fill to that line that's on the bottle. You uh, it's okay to fill a little over because it has a little uh, catcher up here that will put in extra water into. And if that gets filled up, it'll actually put it onto here. So uh, it's always better to have a little more water than less water. And then with this, you go to your incubator and throw it in for 24 hours. You let that sit for 24 hours, come back and check it. And uh, what you want to see is something like this. So again, they're all clear. It looks like water. Uh, what you're looking for are, uh, what you don't want to see is something like this. So each one of these yellow uh, boxes tells us that there's some type of coliform that's uh, in the water. We also have a conversion table that shows us if uh, one well is yellow, then that uh, gives us uh, the probable number of coliforms that's in there. And there's two different types of coliforms that you would see. There's a uh, total coliform and E. coli. And E. coli is the one that you do not want to see. And the way you tell the difference between those two is uh, both of them will be yellow, but we have this black light over here that we can pull out. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but if we turn the light on, you look in there, it's all glowing. So if the wells glow, that means that it's E. coli. If they don't glow, that means it's total coliforms. Once we got our uh, samples out of the incubator, it is time to uh, put them into the Compliance 365. The reason why we use Compliance 365 is uh, one, record keeping. We always want to make sure we have a record of all of our past samples and uh, we can kind of see in case anything happens and uh, certain places and getting as much chlorine, we can see what it used to be or kind of uh, what's going on. Uh, this is also uh, tied in with our First Nations Health Officer. So all of these reports actually go to her and then she's able to look at them and if anything comes up, she can get a hold of us or send the report back and uh, kind of see what's going on. So uh, yeah, so it's uh, record keeping and it's also uh, for the official side of things with our health officer.